Well, welcome to the interviews portion of our DVD, The Crimson Thread. Uh, I didn't really want to get on this side of the camera again. Uh, this I was outvoted because uh, everyone else thought that I had some things to say that I had not said. And so I'll take the time here to do that now. Uh, I'm on the, uh, the set uh, inside the house uh, where we did the meditation chamber and uh, also the, the, the other scenes of the family together. So this is inside the house set. Uh, the reason why I'm here is because I felt like it was the most appropriate because families are what's important and they felt that way in the, the first century just like we do today. Uh, I guess the first thing to do is to tell a little bit about why we, we had the movie and I talked about this before. This is actually the book here. Uh, it's called the Crimson, Thre the Crimson Thread. Uh, I came about writing it from about 10 years of research and I went back in, into the first century. I, I've, I've studied Latin and Hebrew, uh, so I was able to look at the things in the original um, languages. Also, uh, my background in military intelligence, uh, the army, uh, my travel, uh, being able to see how you know, governments and, and military uh, institutions operate, was, gave me the insight that I could see some things happening in the first century that maybe hadn't been explained. There were intelligence operations back then just like there are today, black ops. Um, it was all about gain, about control, about politics, about money. And people had to respond to that. It was not something that they could just be passive over. Um, so I looked at the character that we know as Jesus, and, and really he's not found anywhere in, in history. Not, not the history we're talking about. Yes, the New Testament, yes, the Gnostic Scriptures. Uh, he's, his movement, if it's even him, is mentioned by some historians. Uh, not really any of the period. The closest that we have is one by the name of Josephus. And Josephus was actually a Jewish general. Um, he was a, a noble of a noble family, and uh, he was captured by the Romans. Uh, I, I'd like to tell you the story about that. Might give you a little insight into Josephus, but I'll refrain from that for right now. Just suffice it to say that Josephus uh, went over to the Romans after being a general for the the Jewish army, and uh, basically what he did was is he became the historian for what the Romans wanted him to write about. So I, I approached Josephus also with caution, just as I do you know, any of the, the New Testament material. Everybody has an agenda. As an historian, you've got to recognize that, especially in the time period that you're talking about. So anyway, I, I couldn't find this historical Jesus. And people have been looking for this character for you know two millennia now. And there have been a lot of theories about it could be this person or that person. But one thing I think is for sure, the, the uh, Testimonium Flavium, uh, in Josephus, that's the paragraph that talks about Jesus, is is either a tongue-in-cheek thing by Josephus or it was inserted later by someone else. It, it's not to be taken seriously by any means. Uh, and I have a lot of reasons for that, and you can go on the website to, to find out why that's the case. The website is www.thecrimsonthreadthebook.com. And you can read through there and you can see why I don't think that, that the testimonium is is really something that, that, that is a testament of Jesus. Uh, and I came to kind of conclude that maybe the guy didn't even go by that name. And that's kind of where the story uh, started. Uh, Yeshua is a term that's used in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it's not an individual. It's the saving or the salvation power of God. Uh, it can be personified. I'm not saying it, it, it wasn't. I think all of us are supposed to personify that. But certainly that character is not there, and there have been some, you know, discoveries in the, in the, in the state of Israel and in Jordan um, that seem to indicate some other possibilities. But most of those have been found to be frauds or, or at least questionable. So I'm looking for a guy who's not even by that name. So that's kind of where the story headed off. And then there were some other aspects about this. Uh, in the New Testament, it talks about four brothers. Um, brothers of Jesus, and we've been told throughout the years that these brothers were, you know, half-brothers or cousins or something like that. 
which kind of flew in the face of, you know, real life. So I started digging around and I found some, some uh, similarities. Um, time elements are a little different, things like that. Uh, and so what I, what I basically came up with is that, you know, there probably was this guy. He may not be as we see him uh, in the Gospels, for instance. Uh, it might be significantly different than that. And I looked at the real character and what he would have had to have gone through. So that's what the story is about. Um, I put the put pen to paper, wrote the book, published it, and uh, then had a, another gentleman who read the book say, hey, why don't you make a movie of it? And I laughed at him and I said, sure, sure, yeah, we're going to make a movie of it. And uh, then I kind of thought about it. You know, nobody else is going to do this, so I can give it my best shot. And so here we are. And as I mentioned earlier, my wife Carol thought I was crazy at first, but then she basically threw herself totally into supporting what I was trying to do. So that's basically the background of what's happening here. Again, I, I'm not attacking the Christian faith. I just think that there's another side of it that, that we've been ignoring, and that's the fact that this, this person, this man, lived a life that he, he had to deal with the contradictions and the difficulties of his time. He, he Yes, he, he had a goal in mind. Yes, he, he knew what he was about and all of that. But he did not step off stage. So I think he, he took a, a greater part in things than we may realize. Was he kind, gentle, compassionate? Uh, did he have spiritual things to the forefront? All of those are true. Um, but he still had to deal with, with the situation that he was confronted with. And some things in the story are different about how he did that. Um, but the fact of the matter is, even in the New Testament, we see uh, this character flailing a whip in the temple. Um, and another occasion talking uh, uh, in a parable about uh, a man who, who uh, is telling his followers that, that uh, those who don't follow him take the sword to them. So... There's some interesting things that were going on there. So anyway, uh, that's the background, basically. So we're looking at a, at a man, a man who's living a life, a normal life. Now, the Essenes were, a lot of them, celibate. Uh, and there were various reasons for that. A lot of them think that, a lot of people think it has something to do with their uh, spirituality or whatever. Sex and spirituality are not at odds with each other. As a matter of fact, you can't have one without the other, <laughs> in, in fact. And I, I could explain that a little bit more, but I don't want to start a philosophy class here. But, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that they did not marry. Maybe they didn't trust women. There were a lot of them that don't. And when you see the movie, you'll understand why they didn't. Uh, although Miriam was a, a great example. Um, but uh, th there was a thing in the Old Testament, in the Torah, in the, and, and basically what it says is, is if, if a man marries, he can't go to war. He has to be with his wife for a year. It's only right that you know she's taken this this step to, to be his wife and, and, and it would be wrong for him to go out on a campaign you know with the guys. So the commandment was that he stay home for a year. So to avoid that problem, and I'm not saying it was the best solution, a lot of the Essenes didn't marry. Um, I'm sure there were some other reasons for the asceticism. Uh, some were purity and all that, but uh, I've never bought the fact that when, when the, the, the Torah says that, that a man should marry, uh, that marriage is a good thing, and then the Essenes uh, refused to do that uh, wholesale, that it was just a, a matter of uh, purity and asceticism and, and that kind of thing. I think there was a greater purpose in that. Regardless of all that, the royal family would have continued to, to propagate their family. It, it's, they'd have to. That, that was the way it had to be done. So. Even if, even if the ascetics didn't want to engage in, in conjugal relations, um, the fact of the matter is that, that the royal family would have to, to, of course, continue the royal family. 